hello my darlings welcome back to another video today I'll be doing something very different now this video is going to be about perfumes that are very similar to another brand or another designer fragrance now the reason why I wanted to film this video is because to be honest I wanted to film this video a very long time ago and ever since my perfume collection has been growing I have noticed a certain pattern or a certain trend or I've noticed where a particular perfume smells very similar to something else I already have. So I thought this perfume video would be extremely useful to you guys. I have four perfumes that are extremely well known. These are your four cult perfumes that are adored by everyone. They are most likely known by everyone too. But if you're looking for a fragrance that is a dupe to these four cult perfumes, then I have them here in this video. So let's get started with the very first bottle. I have my Coco Mademoiselle. And I really wanted to talk about this perfume because this is a well-known perfume. It's so popular, guys everyone will have Coco Mademoiselle in their collection. Now I have the Eau de Parfum version. Now I'm going to tell you a perfume that to me smells so similar that this is almost a dupe. Now all the fragrances I have today are going to be somewhat dupe style or a true dupe or something very similar to that but you can decide and let's get the conversation going. Leave me comments down below and tell me what you think are fragrances that do match this perfume and others that I'm mentioning today. This is going to be a series, guys. So I'm really excited to start this with you. I have all my notes written down here below and if you have anything to add, please let's get this conversation going. I really want us as a community to talk about these perfumes and to find fragrances that are so similar that you've discovered as well on your fragrance journey. So I have my Coco Mademoiselle guys. Of course I had to start off with the Chanel perfume. This is really beautiful. Now there are a few perfumes that will smell very similar to Coco Mademoiselle but to me there is a perfume that really stands out it's the perfect dupe in my opinion this is a dupe and you guys let me know what you think of this bottle so the perfume to match my coco mademoiselle is this one here it's my impressor by penhaligans guys these two together this is your perfect dupe they are so similar and i'm going to go through all the notes to discuss how now as you know this is a fragrance that is so popular guys everyone owns coco mademoiselle and Impressa, I believe a few people do know that these two are very similar. They both contain orange in the opening and bergamot. We do have rose in both of these perfumes. The only difference is that with Impressa, we do have cassis in the heart. And then in Coco Mademoiselle, we have rose and alang. But then I find it's the base that's really interesting to me. They both contain patchouli, musk and vanilla. So they are very similar on the dry down and that's what I find. If you haven't tried Impresso by Penhaligans and you're a fan of Coco Mademoiselle, please go out and try it. All right, let's compare these bottles, guys. So first of all, I'm going to spray Impresso for you because I think that's the one that's not so well known compared to Coco Mat. So let's spray a little bit here and um, immediately oh my gosh this is this is coco mademoiselle it's so similar guys i mean i don't want to say similar may i dare say they are the same am i allowed to say that <laughs> guys these are the same so i'm going to spray here my coco mademoiselle and oh my gosh they are so similar guys i mean honestly i think if i was to compare the two so I have Impressa here. To me, this comes across a little bit more fresh and green. And to me, Coco Mademoiselle, you get the patchouli, more patchouli, but it's a little bit more sweeter. That's what I find. But to me, they are so similar, guys. It's amazing how they're so similar. So if you were looking for a dupe for Coco Mademoiselle, you have to try Impressa. Very slight or very subtle differences there, but they are so beautiful. I think if I had to choose, 
This will be a little bit more romantic and softer and sweet, but it's patchouli and rose. My Impressa is a little bit more on the green side, a bit more fruity green. It's really beautiful. Wow, they are so similar, guys. Right, so the next fragrance I wanted to talk about is Baccarat Rouge 540. And now I have a dupe for this fragrance that to me, I have to say, every single time I wear this particular perfume, people ask me, actually they don't ask, they tell me I'm wearing Baccarat Rouge. They tell me that so much so I can't even correct them. They're like, you are wearing Baccarat Rouge. And I'm like, I'm really not wearing Baccarat Rouge. The fragrance that I'm normally wearing, it's my Burberry hair. Guys, I am telling you, okay, you have to believe me when I tell you this. If you want to receive compliments, smell like Baccarat Rouge without paying the price, go out and buy Burberry hair. Every single time I wear this, without a doubt, someone thinks I'm wearing Baccarat Rouge. So, if you're looking for a dupe, I suggest this one here. Now let's talk about the notes because I do find this one so bizarre. They are not alike in the slightest. The notes are so different. No. Beverly Hair contains fruity notes in the top. We do have strawberry, raspberry, blackberry, and sour cherry with lemon. Then in the heart, we have jasmine. And then in the base, we do have musk, vanilla, cashmere, and oak moss, patchouli, and amber. Baccarat Rouge contains jasmine, saffron, and amber green. If you were to spray these two side by side, they smell very different but on the dry down, they give the same or a very similar vibe. They are both sweet. They both mimic cotton candy. It's an ambery, woody type of fragrance, but our Burberry hair is fruity and extremely sweet, guys. And I would say Baccarat Rouge is sweet in a different way. Um, it's a little bit more fluffy, cotton candy-like. This is more cotton candy with some fruits. So that way, yes, they are similar. So I normally pair this as like my daytime scent, especially in the summer. And this one, warm skin, projects so heavily. I really do love this. Now, if I spray a little bit here, I love the atomizer. Can you see the atomizer on this? Can you see that? It's really beautiful, really soft. Guys, it's so lovely. I do receive patchouli. It's that strawberry note. To me, this is strawberry patchouli. Oh, I love it. It smells like sugar, guys. Really nice. It's so sweet. And I think it's just that sugary tone that's really similar. There's the jasmine. And I think the saffron in here just takes it to another place, guys. It's just another world, this perfume. It's so stunning. But if you are looking for a dupe, I mean, let's get this conversation going, guys, because to me, these two are amazing. Another good dupe for Baccarat Rouge is Ariana Grande's Cloud. I have tried that perfume and yes, it does have this very light fluffy texture. It's very similar as well. I find this is more on the sweeter side. I do not own Cloud, I'm going to smell it again, but yes, they do, or they are fairly similar. Um, but to me, I think it's these two. I just love those two. And every time I do wear this, people mistake this for Baccarat Rouge. Guys, so the next perfume I have for you is a perfume I am really happy to discuss, guys. It's one of my favorite perfumes from so many years ago, and it's my Miss Dior. Now, this is the 2012 version, and this is my favorite version. I think after Miss Dior Cherie, which was discontinued many years ago, um, when I bought this one, I fell in love with it immediately, guys. It's so beautiful, it's sweet, it's just nothing like the reformulated versions they have today. I think the 2017 version is nice, it has a woody, sweet sort of praline note, but to me, this is one of my favorites. It's so beautiful. It's delicious, it's feminine, it's elegant, Guys, I just love this perfume. The dupe I have, if you love Miss Dior 2012, you should love Darcy by Parfums de Mali. These two are extremely similar in the base notes, guys. And when you wear them, to me, it's almost like you can't tell the difference. So if you are missing this perfume, then definitely try Darcy. So let's go through the similarities. I have the notes here. Now to me, guys, tell me what you think. Let's start off with Miss Dior. Now, Miss Dior, we have orange in the opening and Darcy, we have orange in the opening as well. I just want to smell this one because it's so beautiful. I just want to remind myself. Yeah, it's really pretty, really, really pretty. 
Mistio we have orange, Darcy we have orange and lemon. And then in the heart notes we have rose and jasmine, and we have rose and jasmine in Darcy. And in the base notes we have patchouli and musk, and in Darcy we have patchouli, musk, and we have some praline in this one as well. So this reminds me very much of my Miss Dior. But then with this praline note, I have to say it does remind me of the Miss Dior Cherie as well. Um, it is sweet, it is rose, but it's not too rosy. If you don't like rose, if you're not a fan of rose, you're absolutely fine with Darcy. It's really gorgeous, guys. I think this is the perfect dupe for Miss Dior. They have a very similar style. So if you love Miss Dior 2012, then you should love Darcy by Parfums Tamale. If you've been watching other perfume reviewers, they will state that Darcy reminds them so much of Coco Mademoiselle. And I have to say, I can see why. It's similar, but to me, this is more on the Miss Dior side because this is sweet. Coco Mademoiselle is not a sweet perfume, there's no praline notes in here, but we do have the sweet notes in the base, we have the woody notes in here, and there's some patchouli. And it reminds me ever so much of my Miss Dior 2012 and my Miss Dior Cherie. So guys, tell me what you think. Do you own Darcy? And let's get this conversation starting, guys. If we had to do a comparison, would Darcy remind you more of Miss Dior or does Darcy remind you more of Coco Mademoiselle? Let me know down below. I think in the beginning I was on the fence. It reminds me only very slightly of Coco Mademoiselle, but to me this is Miss Dior. It's Miss Dior 2012 and Miss Dior Cherie. Guys, let me know. I really want to know what you guys think. But I do love this one. This is really nice. I might spray this. But this does remind me a lot. Oh, even that opening. It's a sweet patchouli rose. To me, this is Miss Dior. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> this is Miss Dior. I'm gonna spray Miss Dior on my other hand because I actually want to wear this one. Okay, let's see. Patchouli, it's sweet, but Miss Dior, this one has more citruses. It's a bit more citrusy, but they're very similar. Darcy is more patchouli and very sweet. So guys, anyway, let me know. Let me know what you think. I'm dying to find out. <laughs> All right, darling. So the next perfume I have for you is this one here. It's my Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. Oh my goodness me, guys. I absolutely went crazy over this perfume when I tried it. I was on a vacation and I was spending some time in Paris. And guys, when I tried this fragrance, I have to say to you, this was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's the marshmallow, it's the sugary notes, it's the caramel, it's the vanilla, it's the powdery tones. Guys, I just love it. This is very sweet. If you love Killian's Love Don't Be Shy, then you are going to love Reckless by Roja Parfums. These two are so similar, guys. But I have to say, Love Don't Be Shy is playful, fluffy, sweet marshmallows. So you know the powder you receive on a marshmallow is like a real treat and it's sweet and playful and fluffy. But this one here has the sweetness, but it's a little bit more mature and refined. So if you smell them both from the lids, they're going to smell exactly the same. They smell so similar. Let's start off with Love Don't Be Shy. I have Bergamot and Neroli in the opening. And then my reckless, we have Bergamot and Orange. So you do have your citrus notes in the openings. And my love, don't be shy, in the heart, they both share Jasmine and Rose. And then in the base, they do have Vanilla and Musk. So these two are quite sweet on the dry down, powdery and soft, but they are extremely feminine. We have Vanilla, Musk, Benzoin, Cinnamon, Sandalwood and Coriander. And you know, I do like coriander in a perfume. It just adds this beautiful, velvety, smooth touch. It doesn't smell like the herb coriander. I can't explain it exactly, but it just adds this. To me, I find it to be a sweeter note. I don't know, it just smells really nice. Another one of my favorite perfumes that contains coriander is my Gentle Fluidity Gold. There's lots of coriander in there, and I just love that combination. It's really pretty. And um, 
Guys, I do love this. I can see where my perfume style is sort of repeating itself. These two are very similar, guys. Very, very similar. When it comes to Reckless, I would recommend this to wear as a date night scent because this perfume is so beautiful and it does radiate really close to your skin. So it's never going to be overwhelming or too powerful for the person next to you. Then I would wear this one. But if you want something that's really sweet and playful, then try your love. I would suggest if you are over 30 or over 25, go for Reckless and under 30, try Love. That's a way you could try and uh, wear them as well. But these perfumes, they're for everyone, guys. There's no limits when it comes to perfume. So enjoy your fragrances. But to me, I love how similar these two are. I normally tend to reach for this in the daytime and I normally wear this in the evenings. And I just love the bottle. Look how stunning that is. Such a beautiful colour, it looks so royal, so regal, that purple. It's really lovely, really lovely. I love the weight of these bottles as well, and they're just so stunning, I love it. It's got this beautiful violet colour, and I love how it's ombre down to the bottom of the pedestal, it's so stunning. Anyway, that's my reckless. <laughs> So my darlings, I really hope this video is helpful to you guys. I really wanted to go through perfumes that are fairly similar because I've noticed now that my perfume collection is growing or has been growing, I can see a certain pattern and I can see a repetition of fragrances where the notes are extremely similar. They almost smell like a dupe. So this video is designed to help you guys make a decision if you did not want to buy a fragrance that smells like something you already own, now you know. But try these fragrances out, tell me what you think. But on the flip side of that now, if you are a fan of a certain perfume, let's say for myself, for example, I love Gentle Fluidity Gold, and I would love to extend that range of fragrance style or fragrance note, then this video is also helpful to you guys if you want to include perfumes that do have a similar style and perfumes that are almost dupable. So guys, you tell me what you think of these. I'm really interested to know what you think of my Darcy. But to me, this just reminds me so much of my Miss Dior Cherie and my Miss Dior. It's just the praline in here, it's the patchouli, it's the rose. I just love this one. And I think out of my whole collection today, the one that wins for a true dupe has to be Impressa. My beautiful Impressa by Pinhaligans. If you love Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle, you have to try this. Let me know down below in the comment section what you think of my video today, if you found this useful. And this is a series that I'm starting, so this is part one. So stay tuned for part two, where I'm going to show you more from my collection. And darlings, I'm wishing you a wonderful day. The sun is coming out, the rain is coming down. <laughs> so enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.